What's going on guys? Bruce Matson here, your host show of Metric Scout Fantasy Football. The other day, I dropped two different videos giving you buy lows on wide receivers. One was a little deeper, and the other one was more for basic redraft. Now I'm going to give you five buy lows at running back. And just like the other videos, I, this is data dependent. I scrubbed some spreadsheets and I'm looking at the workload. Here I'm looking at running backs with a 40% share or higher of their team's rushing attempts that have gained 120 rushing yards or less in the last two weeks. And all of these running backs are outside of the top 25 in PPR scoring over the last two weeks which is an indicator that they might be on a discount on the trade market in your league. Doesn't mean they will be, but that's why I'm pulling these backs because they look like they could be cheap and they're getting workload. And then in the right matchups, workload could dictate more possibilities for fantasy production. I don't agree with all these. These aren't not my takes. These are from the spreadsheet. And then I'm going to give you my feelings on each one as we go along. That being said... Let's dig into these five running backs for today's video. And if this is something you into, before we start, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to have a different one on the running backs probably tomorrow or the next day. Scrubbed by different data. And I'm going to try to have five different running backs for you guys to buy low on. That way, if these five aren't working for you, maybe the next five will. And I'll just keep scrubbing it via the workload to see what happens with the spreadsheet. Also, once we get three or four weeks into the season, the sample sizes will be better. We only have two weeks to work off of, so it's harder to get a full sample of players to work on. So some of these might be a little bit fluffy. Let's go on with the first back here, though. Dalvin Cook has not been living up to expectations right now. That's why he's RB28 with 21.4 PPR points right now in two weeks. Weird game scripts. Not like things are going too bad, but weird game scripts. That last game where the scoring got out of hand. Right now, though, he has a 32% opportunity share. That is huge. That is good. That is very good in 10 targets. So he's getting enough usage in the passing game. The workload is there. 3.15 yards after contact per attempt. You can't ask for much better. You can get into the fours, but that's pretty good. 107 rushing yards, so over 50 yards per game still. Looks like he's a good candidate to rebound. The question is, will his dynasty manager be willing to give him up? Because we're only two weeks. We shouldn't be jumping off cliffs yet, but people who are watching these videos are not jumping off the cliffs because I'm telling you not to. But a lot of other managers... Around the world, all kinds of walks of life is watching this channel. There are some people that will jump off the cliff, and you might be able to buy low on Dalvin Cook. You might be. Some people will. A lot of people won't. I'm not expecting that to happen, but you won't know unless you kick the tires. The reason why I like him is getting touches. He's getting targets. He's looking all right. And the workload, the rushing yardage is kind of there. Moving on to the next guy. He's not the most popular running back right now. But damn it, he's got a sexy picture on this thing. And it's Ezekiel Elliott. I love this picture that I found. If you got the belly hair showing, happy trail to the big forest. And I love the visor game. That visor drip just makes him move up my ranks. But right now, RB48 and PPR. 11.8 fantasy points right now. 25% opportunity share. Four targets. Passing work's not getting there. Opportunity share's all right. It's dipped compared to previous years. 2.88 yards after contact per attempt. I honestly was expecting it to be a little lower, so that's okay. 105 rushing yards, so we're getting over 50 rushing yards per game. The thing about Dallas, though, is things are dismal. Things are hell right now. The offensive line's trash, not looking good. Pollard's over here stealing work and looking fabulous. He's explosive, and without Dak being there, it's hard to believe in this offense this week against the Giants, we got a very low game script due to the over-unders being projected from Vegas. I think they're at like a 38 or 39 over-under, which is very low. I need him to 
to be able to exceed expectations. The bar set a little lower. RB48, I know he can increase upon that. I know that there's potential there. I know he can get more targets out of the backfield. I think the bounce back could be when Dak comes back. That could happen. Am I buying into that? I don't really want to. I don't want to. I don't want to pay much for that. If I can get him for damn near free, like say if we had a couple more bad games, he keeps falling down the rankings, sure, yeah. But right now, I don't want to pay for that. He's not one of my targets. If he's free, though, if this keeps happening, and he's still getting a good opportunity share, still getting workload, still getting touches, I've said this the last few years, the one thing Zeke's good at is getting touches. Touches do eventually lead to fantasy points, whether it's just sneaking across the goal line or just getting some extra targets in a, in a game in a plus matchup. They do happen. Could be a good flex play down the line. The days of him being a stud RB1 are over. Those, those are done. But he could give you some value. I just don't want to bet on it. I'm not betting on it personally. But at the right price, I will. I'm always for dirt-free stuff. And that could happen here in the next few weeks, so keep your eyes out on Zeke. But I wouldn't pay for him. Next back here is Damian Pierce, RB44, 15.2 points, 24% opportunity share. So he's in that Zeke range. And really what's killing the opportunity share is week one when Rex Burkhead got all those targets out of the backfield. And also they've been spreading around to the wide receivers. Three targets in two games. That's not sexy. I need more work in the passing game. I need more touches out of the backfield. 3.3 yards after contact per attempt is very tempting. That is a number I expect him to be good at from what we've seen in preseason and on his college film. The Texans are scrappy. This team's going to be in a lot of games. and They're going to be in more games than what you think. That's good and bad. That could allow them to be in more game scripts where they're running the ball more so they're not playing from behind. So they'll be able to use them on those early downs, third downs, maybe get them some check downs, some other downs or whatever. But Damian Pierce is not a buy low right now, though. Even though the fantasy production is stating that, he's not a buy low right now. Could be later. He, that could happen. But it's not. he's not a buy low right now because I feel like people are holding tight. And I know that because I've dropped some TikToks on Rex Burkhead uh, a couple weeks ago, and a lot of people are, are chirping that up with Damian Pierce. And to let you guys know, each one of these players I'm talking about will end up being a TikTok, and I'll just read off these stats. And at the end, I'll be like, oh, it's Dalvin Cook and catfish people at the end. That's what I like to do it here. Damian Pierce will get his TikTok this week, maybe tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. Next running back. Next running back here. Is Rashad Penny, RB51, 10.2 fantasy points, 23% opportunity share, three targets, 4.11 yards after contact per attempt, 75 rush yards. Question mark on the Kenneth Walker because Kenneth Walker could steal some workload. He could siphon that away. Seattle's been funny this year. They've been more productive in the passing game than I would have thought, faster paced than what I thought. Rashad Penny is one of those players. I can turn things on a dime one way or the other. I'm not willing to buy in. I'm not willing to bench 100%. I don't have him high in my rankings if you look at my rankings videos because I'm very scared of Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker was getting work in the passing game. 23% opportunity to share. Highly factored in the week one. Only three targets. I saw that what he did last year. Of course, we all know that. That's why he was getting drafted in the latter part of the drafts, but... If things are getting hairy right now, it's a little bit of a gamble. I'm not paying much to get him, but I'm trying not to get him too. So he just has to come my way uh, very free. I'm not into Rashad Penny right now. It could turn around. He could have some good matchups, but I'm not into it. I kind of like him this week, but not really. I like him more for DFS. Next back here is Melvin Gordon. Currently the RB45, 13.5 PPR fantasy points. A 21.5 opportunity share, not target share. I wish it was a 21% target share, but that, that's a typo, or I forgot to change things out. Three targets, 3.45 yards after contact per attempt, 105 rushing yards, even with him sharing with Javante Williams. Him getting a 21.1% opportunity share, even with Javante Williams sucking up a shit ton of targets in the passing game, 
and getting workload. The thing about Melvin Gordon is he's cheap. He is damn near free in all formats. And if something happens to Javante Williams, you know that 21% opportunity share is going to jump. And when it does jump, he's still damn good. 3.45 yards after contact per attempt. We saw what he did last year. We're seeing him do some things on the field right now. That's going to jump, and that's going to make him valuable. If I had Javante Williams, I would pay a little bit more to get Gordon for this year. We don't like getting handcuffs, but talented backup running backs are fine. Also, if I don't have Javante Williams, I kind of still want Melvin Gordon on the back end of my roster. I don't mind him burning a hole there because I know if something happens to Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon can step up, help me out my flex, be my RB2, maybe even my RB1. And that's what I like about Melvin Gordon. He is one of my buys here. The guys I'm buying off of this list, there aren't many. Melvin Gordon, Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook, I'm not expecting to get much. I could probably swing Melvin Gordon. Rashad Penny's got to be free. I don't see anybody selling me Damian Pierce at the price I would want. Ezekiel Elliott's kind of scary, but if he's free, I'll take it. But that's my thoughts on these backs. Let me know what you think about this list. I'm going to have some more lists coming at you here in the next day or so. More top five lists on these running backs that are buy low. I'll scrub more metrics to find you more running backs so you can try to trade for on the cheap. Trying to get your wheels spinning to help you out on your fantasy teams. The running back streets are a little rough right now. They're looking rough right now. RB Heavy is not doing so well right now. I know it's two weeks into the season, but we can scrape things along. We can figure things out. We can strap it up and buy some more running backs. We just got to figure out how to, and I'm here to help you. Let me know which running backs you're trying to get off the waiver wire or through trade down in the comments. Smash that like button on the way out. It helps the video and the algorithm. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because I'm dropping content like this left and right. If anything, even if it's not helping you per player-wise, at least you're getting some advanced metrics coming your way. At least you're learning some process to help you out going forward into the season. And I'm also dropping rankings videos. I got... It one's in the archives for running backs and wide receivers. Go check those out. And I'm doing that weekly. And I do two sets. One with tiers at the back half of the week. And one straight up rankings in the beginning of the week to get you guys started. That way, once you start your weekly prep, you have something to work with. But I want to thank you for watching. And I'll catch you on the next video.